Hi, this is Susan from Susan B. Cards. Today I'm going to remake this card. I made this one earlier in the month for Simon Says Stamp, and it was for the Sunny Vibes release. I had the set called Beach Coming, and it's this rubber stamp set. It has shells and then the um, stamps to color in the, the um, solid parts of the shells. So I had this idea to um, stamp the shells onto this piece of paper and then I covered it with acetate so that it would look like the, the tide is coming in. And then I just took some texture paste and I put it on the edge here and then um, some glitter gel uh, I applied to the top of the texture paste. I fussy cut a few of these shells and then I um, put a pop dot underneath and then just glued the acetate onto these pieces so that it would um, stand up above just a little bit. And then I just put some foam tape underneath the um, the uh, wave here, the foam from the wave. I used um, these lawn cuts. These are old, but um, I'll link them in the description because they're still available. Um, and I think most people use this as like mountains or snow drifts. I think I, I use um, them for snow drifts at winter time. But I thought that it could also be um, the way that the wave would look coming in. This time what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to start from this edge and then um, I'll just hand cut that little bit here. And I put the, the text paste over it anyway. You couldn't really see the edge um, these dies don't cut through the acetate. They would just, they just leave the impression. So it just left a perforation on this acetate. So I had to go through with the scissors anyway and just cut, cut it off. So um, I also used alcohol ink on the acetate, and I'll show you how I did that in a demonstration. I'm going to use um, some lighter colors of alcohol ink. I have cloudy blue, and pool. I do have darker blues, but I found that um, it was hard to see the seashells underneath. So um, I'm just gonna use these light colors. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of ink down and use some isopropyl alcohol to move it around a little bit more. I have the acetate sitting on top of just some scrap paper just for easier cleanup. Now this color looks a little dark already, so I don't want to use too much of that. So I just have one of these droppers, and I'm gonna use this um, blower tool just to move it around a little bit. Then what I'd like to do is take one of these alcohol ink tools. It's a Tim Holtz alcohol ink tool. And I just cut felt to fit. You can buy the felt, but it's cheaper just to cut it yourself. So I just went to Michael's and got a sheet of it. And then I just like to put dots of um, more alcohol ink on the blender. I might even put a, a, a little bit of the darker color. This is how I always do. Um, water. This is turquoise. 
I'm just going to put a couple of these. I don't want there to be too much. And then I take some of the blending solution and I just put a couple of dots of that on here too because that'll leave some um, uneven areas. It'll make some uneven areas and leave some dots. So I'll show you what happens. So you can see as I'm pressing down, it's kind of leaving some dots. And then I could also go to the areas where um, I didn't move any alcohol ink into the corners. Here's the card. I'm going to put it right on top so you can see what it's going to look like once it's mounted. I think there's just a little bit of area here where I want to get a little bit more ink. But other than that, I'm done. Now the side that I put the um, the ink and the blending solution is sticky. So um, what I'm going to end up doing is flipping this like this. This is the sticky side and this is a smooth side just so um, you don't have that alcohol ink sitting on the top. You'll have the smooth side sitting on top of the card. And then this will be face down. And there's a little bit of felt catching on. I could see when I lift it up, um, when I look into the light, I can see a little bit of felt on here, but that's not going to matter later because um, of the seashells. So that's pretty much what I want. I, I made it a little bit lighter than the first one that I made, and I like it a little bit better. I'm just going to put it like this. This is the um, smooth side. This is the side with the alcohol ink. I'm just going to use a piece of mint tape and I have this uh, this is very handy this is the dispenser I have for it and it's low tech tape mint tape from scrapbook.com and I also bought the um, tape dispenser from there I just think it makes it easy you don't have to look for your tape I know exactly where it is on my desk and I also keep one where I die cut so my cutting station as well so I'm just going to use this here just to line it up. I'm going to go die cut it and I'll be right back. So I put the die through with the acetate through the um, big shot and it left an impression. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it along this line and then just continue it a little bit more. Here's the cut piece. And um, this is a piece that's left over, and I'm just going to throw that away. I applied some crackle paste onto the edge of this acetate, and then a lot of it started to flake off, and I think that I remember what I did. I think that I started with um, acrylic paint and painted this edge. And then maybe applied the crackle paste over it. I have the worst memory for what I did. People ask me all the time, how did you make that? And it, you know, I feel bad because sometimes it seems like I'm trying to keep some kind of secret, but I really don't remember unless I write it down right away, which I hardly ever do, or if I make a video. So I'm just applying a pretty thick layer of this acrylic paint. This one I think I got this at uh, Blick, but you can get this anywhere. You can get any kind of acrylic paint. And that should stick to the acetate. I'm just not even putting any water in it. I'm just going straight from the tube. I just want it to be, you know, a little bit thick, a little bit dimensional. I'm going to let this dry and maybe I'll come back and put some more of that crackle paste on top. I think that's what I did last time because I could see it's pretty dimensional on here and it didn't flake off, which is interesting. But there's a lot of texture on the top. 
I'm all out of regular Distress texture paste. You can use whatever texture paste you like to use. I would normally use just the plain texture paste, but this one is Crackle. After it dries, it's going to have a little bit of a crackled edge, but I'm going to go ahead and co cover that with some glitter gel. I used this in another video before, and um, it's not available anywhere. I think they discontinued it. So I'm just going to use what I have remaining, but there's lots of different things you can use. Any kind of glitter paste, glitter gel that you have, you can use. Now, I just use my finger for this. If you like to use some kind of tool, paintbrush, whatever, you can. I just want it to look just like the foam of the water. So I just put some on my finger. And I know that, you know, they say don't really stick your finger in it because it can change the, um, the gel itself, but I'm going to run that risk. It just, I, I find it so much easier just to use my finger for some things, and this happens to be one of them. Anytime that I um, just apply a small amount of something, I like to use just my finger. But if you have a paintbrush or something that's old and you can use that, you just have to remember to rinse it out because the paste will dry hard. As you can see, it's pretty well covered. Just put a little bit more here, just unevenly. And this is gonna take some time to dry. The acetate um, is dry where I put the paste and the acrylic paint. Now I'm just going in with this Gina K Glitz Glitter Gel. If you know of another glitter gel or glitter paste that's good, be sure to leave me a comment below because I'm still looking for one that I really like. Um, I like this one because I was able to use it with stencils. So I would ink up a project with a stencil and then I'd use um, you know, the scraper tool and put the paste over it and scrape it across and you could see through it. Um, so you still saw the color that you used and then had this layer of glitter over it, which was so pretty. Okay, I'm just gonna run my finger over it so I can get off the excess. Just wipe that off. Okay, and that's about it. I'm just gonna go and wash my hands and I'll let that dry for a while. Just draw a little bit of a line here so I get an idea of where the um, surf is coming in. Just so I have somewhat of an idea where I can stamp. I took out the stamps that are the outline just to um, get an idea of placement. I'm gonna put the seas of the day here. So I wanna be sure I leave enough room for the sentiment. And then I want some of this starfish to be hanging between the sand and the surf. This I'm gonna stamp separately. You could see in my card. I, I fussy cut it and just put it right here and that's what I'm gonna do. But um, I'm gonna start right here with this stamping first and then I'm gonna work out. And then I think I'm gonna fussy cut, a, fussy cut a couple more and put them on top of the water so they're floating. I think that was one thing that my card was missing. Everything was underwater here and it would have been nice to place a couple of them on top. I'm using archival ink, and this is ground espresso. And I'm going to heat emboss that um, with clear. I'm going to go ahead and heat that. I'm not going to do it um, on camera just because it's so loud. So now I'm lining things up around the sentiment. I'm using vintage photo. Um, archival ink and then what I have to do is um, line up the solid pieces which color in the um, starfish all the seashells have you know pieces to um, color in using antique linen distress oxide So 
pretty easy to color that in when you have a stamp. And then there's a star for the center. I lined up the star. Hopefully it's well lined up. And then I'm just using some Rusty Hinge Distress Ink. You could use whatever colors you want. I just wanted something a little bit darker than that antique linen. Here are the ones that are lined up that are going to be partially underwater. This one's going to be completely in the sand, but these will be partially underwater. I just want to be sure there's enough room for everything. So I, I um, first stamped the outline, and then this is a solid stamp that you line up, and then you can see that it colors it in. So I lined up this piece. Hopefully it'll look good. And then I'll just use some of this pink on this layer. And you can see how easy it is to color these in. You want it a little darker. You could also leave some of the areas white to look like highlights. And then I have this that goes here. Now I'm gonna color in this corner here, which is the sand. You can see it on my original card. Uh, just right here. I'm just gonna color the sand. I wanna keep where the water is going to be white because the blue um, inked acetate looks a lot better against white. So I just drew a faint line here in pencil and um, just so that I would know where to um, color the sand. The good thing about the sand is that um, the blending looks better if you don't do it evenly. So in a normal blend, you would really want the colors to be even and not blotchy, but you know, wet sand looks blotchy. So I'm just gonna put down some, this is Distress Ink Antique Linen. And I'm just gonna color over that. If you remember, the sentiment is um, heat embossed. So that'll stay shiny and it'll resist the ink. So I don't have to worry about that smearing the way distressed ink might. If it touches any of the inks, so. Okay. I'm gonna use a little bit of the tea dye and rusty hinge. I want to put a couple of um, specks onto my um, card, the way that sand would look a little bit speckled. And to do that, rather than dipping my card, because I don't want it to get anywhere else, I don't want it to get all over, I'm just taking a piece of um, scrap acetate. I put a little bit of ink down, and then I'm just going to go in and, and just dot a couple areas. I want my seashell to have some glitter on it and I don't really use glitter much. So I'm gonna do this Tim Holtz um, technique and you take Ranger sticky embossing powder and while the ink was still wet, I poured the sticky embossing powder over it. Now this is something you need to do really quick. I'm gonna heat it and it's gonna get um, clear and sticky and then I immediately pour rock candy over it and you can't wait too long because you know this is adhesive and if it cools it won't be sticky anymore and you know of course you can skip this step i just liked it on the big seashell there You can see how shiny it is. And I'm gonna fussy cut that out. Okay, I have just about everything done. You can see that I colored all my shells in. I popped up 
this one, this one, this one. So I fussy cut it, colored it, put a pop dot behind it, a couple pop dots. They're hanging over on the back and I could just trim that off. And then I'm gonna have the water go right on top. These two seashells have pop dots on them because I'm going to put this like this and then put these on top. So I have just two things floating in the water. Here's the water. And on the back, I took some thin foam strips. I got these from um, scrapbook.com. They have very thin strips. Here they are. So these are great if you just have some thin things you're trying to stick on. Um, I just cut them to fit whatever I need. I use these quite a bit. Take the release paper off of this because the collage medium dries pretty fast, but it does stick to um, acetate. It, you know, it's great for plastic. You know, so I just have to remember which of these. You don't really have to put a ton of collage medium on. Just putting a little bit on these raised ones or you could just use one of these foam brushes I feel like that takes off more just push it out so you can't even see it and then with the water the alcohol ink you won't be able to see it and then I'm just going to glue these right on with collage medium also just want to set it the correct way. Let's put an old acrylic block right on top just to wait till that dries. And the last thing that I have is this shell and I'm going to just put that in this corner. I also stuck some pop dots on the back and I'll just put that here. Um, I'll have more information on my blog, which is susanbcards.blogspot.com. I'll have all the products that I listed on the blog and beneath this video. If you use those links, that helps me out. Let's me know that you find um, this content useful if you decide to purchase anything. And I'm just going to place it right there. Stick that down too. So here's the two cards. And really, if you want to make it easier, you don't have to pop this piece of acetate up. I just thought it, you know, kind of made it look a little bit special. But it's certainly beautiful if you just, you can you just use collage medium and uh, glue this piece of acetate on. Thank you for watching. Leave me a comment, like this video, um, and I will see you next time. Bye.